guys. I um, want to just uh, give you a quick demonstration on how to service a real, servicing a real Saltus BG40H um, the correct way. Uh, you bring your reels into the Kingfisher, they do a phenomenal job by stripping the reel completely down to every nut, screw and washer. Uh, using the Kingfisher reel oil, Kingfisher grease and real multi-purpose grease and what you guys can also do if you don't want to bring it in for service at the time is when you finish fishing rinse your reel off try it with a nice rag get the Spaniard protector spray the reel flat on the outside maybe just get a, a bit of a damping and then put it on side this will protect your reel from any salt corrosion and and dirt. Um, what we do at the Kingfisher, we carry a wide variety of uh, earrings that uh, we cater for our Dawa reels and also some of the Shimano uh, product re uh, reels out there. Basically most for most reels we, we try to keep earrings for. We also carry a wide range of carbon text drag washers for a wide range of reels that's, that's out there. Uh, you can get them at the Kingfisher store at the retail floor. The real grease and oil Spaniard also at the retail floor. In the pick later on, we'll give you a demonstration on how to service the BG40 Saltist. This is a Saltist BG40 uh, coming for a service by a customer. Basically, he's a pedal ski guy. He asked for a service. We stripped the whole reel completely, starting from the left hand side plate. Strip it completely down to what you see here on the table to get into every part of the reel that you can find. Our next step, we take out the spool, which is a spool here. We remove the spool, assess the bearings, strip the right hand side plate, which is obviously on the right hand side of the reel. All the screws come off, the handle comes off, and you see all the parts inside the reel. You get your anti reverse cam with your anti reverse. Hole. On top of that is your carbon text drag washers. This drill does come with carbon text washers. They are rewashable and you can regrease them. They last for a very long time. Your drive gear, which is a big brass gear, and then all your carbon text washers with your metal washers in between. Then you get your pinion gear, uh, which actually turns the spool of the reel. Uh, we, we assess that as well to see if there's any wear and damage in turn with the, with the main gear. If there's any wear or damage, we call the customer and we let them know this is a problem, give them a price, if he needs to change it, we change it. Then obviously the star drag, which is this gold one here, the main shaft and then the bearing that fits into the housing of the frame. Right hand side plate obviously that we've stripped off. We assess the inside. This is the roller clutch bearing, which is a one-way clutch bearing. If that needs to be replaced, we also contact the customer. As you can see, we wash every single part. Once it's washed, we basically reassemble everything in reverse. When we service our reels, we use our Kingfisher reel oil, which we put a couple of drops onto the bearings. And then when it comes to greasing up the gears and the drag washers, we use the Kingfisher drag washer and real grease, which is a multi-purpose grease. Uh, can be used on your teething of the gears and very lightly onto the drag washers, which these are carbon ticks. You can put on or you can leave it dry depending on how, on, a, on how strong you want your drag. You want a nice smooth drag, add the grease, you want a drag that locks up, leave the grease off. And on any metal parts that uh, needs to be avoided from friction. Uh, once the reel is put together, it will basically look like that. All nice and running smooth and hopefully one happy customer. When you take your reel apart, it is very, very important that you try put a white sheet of paper down or a big nice white cloth then you can start re uh, disassembling your reel when you disassemble the reel try and put 
all the parts that you take off in order. Uh, so when it comes to reassembling, or even yet, once it's, it's disassembled, obviously there will be grease, maybe take a photo of it or with your phone so you have a rem remembrance of how it goes back. Because obviously you've got to wash the parts, then you won't know where they all go. Once you wash the parts, then maybe you can go back to your photo on your cell phone, put lay the parts out as I've got here, then all you've got to do is basically reverse the process with the with the Kingfisher oil in the piece. Um, we're going to start the reassemble of the Salters BG40 now. First up, you've got to have the, the frame assembly, which is this black frame here, completely stripped, washed. So basically what we do is, the customer's original bearings, uh, there are two that has to be changed. The first one is this one over here. The way that I found that the bearing was uh, rough is I grabbed a bearing in my fingers and I pressed the center housing with my finger and just turn it slowly like that. Now the bearing is rough. Uh, later on it will cause problems so I prefer to change them with our stainless steel bearings which I have here which we sell at the Kingfisher at a very reasonable price. Uh, what I like to do is grab the frame grab my little uh, paintbrush here, grab some grease, which is a caramel color, and I like to fill this hole up with the Kingfisher Real drag washer grease, multi-purpose. Then what I do is I grab the bearing, and then I push it into the housing. Now this way it gets a bit messy, so you gotta have a rag on hand. I press it in, I smear the grease around, and she is it settled inside. Next will be the main shaft which is also known as a draft shaft which basically holds all your gearing and the handle, star drag etc etc. The draft shaft retainer plate. This is this big silver goodie here which is nice and clean now. Basically it fits into the little u-shaped slot then will basically press onto the frame onto three little locating pins which is now settled inside. Got my little rag. I'm very meticulous when I service reels it's got to be clean. Three retaining screws which I will grab. Put the retaining screws in. Sometimes I use an electric screwdriver but it's not always clever. Uh, it can damage the screw heads. So basically I put these in. There's a third one going in there. Okay, that's all nice and tight. Next will be the anti-reverse ratchet with the anti-reverse pole. Anti-reverse poles sits uh, onto the anti-reverse ratchet uh, like so. That will go over the main shaft onto a little locating pin. You've got to turn the shaft a little sometimes until it slots down onto the square of the shaft. I'll check if it's working nicely. When the dog, they call this as a anti-reverse dog, you turn it, you bring it back to make sure it actually comes back on itself, and which it is. That is perfect. Grab our little real oil the Kingfisher. I like to just put a bit of a drop over there. Then move it around. Sorry, move it around. Now that is nicely lubed. The next step is what I what I do is I like to because I know this customer and he is a pedal ski fisherman. I like to smear the grease a bit all over the, the frame and the body. Not too thick that you can't see anything inside the reel. Basically paint it on, just to give it an added protection from the salt water. Next will be the yoke plate, which is this character here. These two little bumps also put a bit of grease on. Also underneath I like to put a grease. Any part that's got friction metal to metal, I like to add the grease. That will fit on like so. That's nice and smooth now. 
Next will be the pinion yoke. Okay. Uh, pinion gear, which is this oak here. You will have to put this one on first before you put on the big main gear. I also like to get a lot of grease in the grooves of the T thing. Got liberal like that, like that. That will fit onto these two pillars. Press it down so it is flat. That's how it will sit. Next step will be the first drag washer, which is a Carbontex washer. They call this a drive, a drive gear washer. I just like to put a bit of grease on this one because I know this customer he likes a smooth track. This is where it gets a bit messy. I like to get the grease and actually work it into the Carbontex drag washer. So that is nicely lubed up. That will go on top of the anti reverse ratchet, like so. Next will be the main gear, this big brass gear. Likewise, nice grease on the teething. Like I say, it does get a bit messy. But once it's on, it's on. I also like to put the appropriate amount of grease. I don't like to over grease the reels. That will fit directly onto the drive shaft. You've got to fiddle around just so it actually seats down properly. That is now down. You can also get the yoke springs, which are these two little yoke springs. Uh, they are quite hardy, unless you accidentally lose one or bend it out of shape, you will have to replace it. Those will fit onto the two little pillars of the yoke. This allows the pinion gear to go up and down uh, when you engage the clutch. Now, back to the first drag washer. The, again, carbon tax, get a bit of grease, not to put grease on. Grease on, work it in. So that's nicely lubed, on. Next one is your metal washer. I'll just use the grease that is on my fingers and I'll just lube it like so. Basically, finish the, the sequence as you see here on the table. Next will be your eared washer. Now these, well it's called the eared washer, it's got these two little ears on either end, which will locate on a slit that's inside the drive gear, which, uh, which basically doesn't allow the drag washer to turn. Uh, as you can see, it will slide into the slot and seat nicely. So that prevents the washer from turning. That's its job, it must stay still. Next one. Your last metal drag washer is quite a thick one. Now, you will see there is like a little, very slight, the convex must show up. So that will go down that way. Now what I do is I grab the Roller clutch collar, which is this guy over here. Now this one is still okay with some of them. Uh, if it is pitted or has any marks on it, it will cause the reel to malfunction at a later stage, but this one's still very, very, very good. So we're gonna put this guy back. That will sit down onto the shaft like that. Now, the time has come for the right hand side plate to be fitted. What I do with this, this here is the one way roller clutch bearing. Now this bearing can only turn one way. That basically gives you the infinite uh, anti-reverse. Grab your real oil, lightly oil 
the little splines inside the rotor clutch. You can put quite a bit. Whatever you do, do not put any grease on this rotor clutch system. It will fail because the grease actually clogs up these little uh, splines and it doesn't allow the bearing to work at its, at its best. And then you will get most frustrated. Put a bit of oil there. What I do is I put a bit of oil onto this here, make sure that's moving nicely back and forth. What I do is grab some more grease, just put it on there, under there. It's basically just to protect it from the salt water. Because I know this is a pedal ski reel and obviously it lives off underwater most of the time. And the, uh, this reel has been on the ski for quite a long time and it's in very, very good condition, I must say. That is all done. What we do is now turn it upside down. I'll have the lever forward. What I do is then locate the drive shaft through the, the hole of the, of the right hand side plate. Give it a little wiggle. Hold it down. And what I do is I turn the lever to back and forth until it clips down, which is just done there. When your lever can move back and forth and the plate is, is completely shut, no gap, you can hold it down. What I do is I just grab it like this, hold it down there, grab the right hand side plate screw, put it in there, grab your flat screwdriver, uh, screw it down. Basically, once all these are in, we can carry on with the next process. Make sure that the screws are nice and tight. You don't want them coming coming loose. That is nicely done now. Everything seems to be working. Next will be the drive shaft bearing. Now I'm having to put a new bearing in this one. This is the old one. It's, this one's actually very rough. So I've um, got a new uh, bearing which you can get from, from the uh, Kingfisher workshop. We carry most bearings for, for most reels. That goes slides in over. Once it is down, I get the bearing washer, which is this thin guy here. That will go on top of the bearing. Just got to pry it down there. A little bit. Next will be your spring washers. Now, the spring washer. You will see the spring washer has got a slight bend to it. Times two. As you can see that. So, what a lot of people do is they actually have them like that into each other, which is the wrong way. You basically got to have them opposing each other which will give a very very slight gap. I don't know if you can see that but there is a, a very very slight gap. So basically they must sit like that. Not like that. That to me is wrong. This way it gives you your max drag. So once they're on the shaft I put the first one down which will sit like that. Then the second one which will cup over the other one, will sit on top. Okay, once that is on, then you'll get to uh, clicker. This is the uh, star drag clicker, which makes a, makes a clicking sound when you loosen or tighten the drag. Uh, the soak is okay, so we will put that on. Over that, on top of the drag spring washers. Then you get your star drag washer, which has a copper side and a grey side when they are quite new. Uh, the side is the grey side, it's got like a silicon uh, paint on top of it just to 
make it a lot smoother when you're winding the star drag. That will go on top down like that. Now what I like to do is grab your grease. I like to put a bit of grease on the thread like so. Just to give it that added, added protection. This is your star drag. Your clicker works inside the inside these tiny little grooves there. That's what gives you the noise of the clicker. If your clicker spring is worn, uh, it'll give you a very very faint uh, noise. So that will screw onto the main shaft, like so. That'll go all the way down until you get to the clicker. As here. As you can hear, click is working quite nicely. I hope you can hear that. Then you get your the thickest washer, which fits between the star drag and the handle. Uh, this basically allows you to tighten the handle down tight on top of the star drag and not directly onto the star drag, which will give you problems. So what we do is we put the handle on. Your handle nut is the big uh, castle nut. We'll go on. Now, before you actually tighten that castle nut, make sure that your saw drag is actually moving. Grab, you do get the tools sometimes on the boxes. Uh, that will tighten up. You've got to line, line the groove with the hole so it allows you to put in the locking screw. like so. Star drag is still moving we're good to go. If the star drag does tighten up and doesn't move that means that you haven't tightened the star drag down far enough which allows the space that you take over. Put in your little locking screw. That's not going anywhere. Basically what I like to do is get a toothbrush with a bit of oil on it, just polish the reel on the outside, gives it a nice clean look. And just makes the reel feel, feel better. Because you've got grease on your hands from doing a service, you can smear the grease all over the frame in it. Again, just to give that added, that added protection. Yeah, this seems to be nice and shiny. That's what we want. Now, the next process from here will be fitting the spool. I have checked the spool bearings. The spool bearing seems to be in top shape, which is nice and clean now. So basically what I like to do is run a line of real oil across the shaft. Once that is in, on, I slide the spool in into the housing, giving a turn. Now that is now located in the spool. Next we come to the left hand side plate. The left hand side plate has been stripped completely. This is your ratchet tongue which works off the spool ratchet. Now this allows the sound for when you got a fish or you get a bite. Uh, once this runs it will alert you, make a big noise, it will alert you that you, you have a run. Once you have a have a pull and you got the fish on, try and try and turn it off. It just prolongs the life of the click tongue. If you leave it on it's just gonna wear the tongue out and wear the cog on the spool out which uh, could get pr quite pricey at the end. Um, again, what I do is, coming, coming back to the reassemble, get some grease. I like to put grease in the hole of the, where the bearing will sit. Now this left hand side bearing is still uh, good to go. So I like to push it in there, put my finger on there and then press down. 
And sometimes I'm going to go. There we go. Like I say, it does get a bit, does get a bit messy. Just clean it off, smear it a little bit around. Now this is just a bearing dust cover. Um, this goes back on top of the bearing dust cover. You can put a bit of uh, reel oil on there just to uh, catch whatever might go inside the reel. Your bearing retainer is this uh, silver plate here. This will locate onto these onto the little, two little ears at the back here. It will sit like that. Now you come to the to the clicker or click spring as they call it. This gives you the sound from when it runs off the ratchet. This will sit basically there. Now what I do is I, you basically got to grab it and open it up a bit and then locate it so it sits like that into the groove. I like to have it off in the beginning. I mean on in the beginning so the button is basically down now. So once that's there I hold it there, grab the retaining screw and just tighten it up. That's nice and tight. Still, still on, that'll be off. So on, off. And that's all it is. You can put a bit of grease. I would put a little grease on there just to give it that added protection. Oh, I just smell some grease here as well. So now, once that is all done, you can grab your frame assembly, relocate the left side plate to the left side of the frame. Oh yeah. Sorry, there is a locating pin there, which you can see there. Sometimes they do drop out. It's not a train smash if they do, but it's always nice to have one there. It just helps it locate better. So once it's there, you can actually hear it click into place. So that's located now. Get your left side plate screws, tighten them up nicely. The reason why I did this, I was just checking to see if there is any play in the spool. I like to have some play back and forth of the of the spool before I tighten up the plates. If the cap is too too tight and there's no play, what will happen is when you start tightening up the screws, it might damage the cap or the end of the spool. That's why I like to back it off a bit so there's a, a bit of play. Once the plate is tightened up, then you can adjust your cross control cap, which I'll show you now. Those are tight, because I've still got grease on my hands, so I just give it a nice wiping. Real spinning 100%. There is still a bit of play. Now you can adjust the spool to where it is not knocking anymore. And you haven't got that problem of damaging the end of the spool. Check everything. Nice smooth drag, I'm holding the spool, checking the drag, which is actually really nice and smooth. And there we have it. One serviced VG Solstice 40H. Good to go.